Hi, I'm Mike Vandenberg with Auto Photo Systems in Phoenix. We are making this tape to acquaint you with the setup, maintenance, and repair of the Auto Photo Systems photo booth. This photo booth is a standard 3 print, 40 millimeter, single choice booth. And we will go through the setup after delivery. Upon receiving your photo machine from California, Open the door. Do not turn it on yet. Don't plug it in. Open it up. Inside there are switches. Okay. The top switch with the outlet above it is your main power switch. This turns the machine on. When it comes to you, there will be a rope tied to the carrier section holding it down. Remove that rope first untie it and uh, discard the rope. On some machines you will have replenisher bottles or they will be in the tanks. Remove the replenisher bottles before starting. These are glass so be careful they don't break. Okay, now the next step what you want to do is remove your splash guard. Take your splash guard off of your tanks, set it aside Have your heater strap, call the heat belt, take your heat belt off. This is your spider assembly. Remove the top ball nut that holds the spider on. It is reverse thread. After you do that, you can easily lift up the spider and remove it from the top of the transmission. Gently set it aside, trying not to bend any arms or carriers. And then you have your tanks assembly. Remove your tank assembly. Once you removed your tank assembly, you have your, your drip tray. And what we're going to do first is make sure the transmission is aligned before proceeding any farther. Up inside the machine, there is a gauge. This helps you align your transmission. It's a spring-loaded gauge, and you set it right on top of the stud on top of the transmission. Okay, now, make, now plug in your machine, and down on the bottom, right-hand side usually is where the location is, is for the transmission switch. So you're going to turn your main power switch on, and then turn on your transmission switch. Do not put your hands down on the pulley or near the motor or under here while the transmission is running. So we're going to turn that on now. And let it come up and then shut the power off. Okay? Now, what we see on this is a thin black line on the gauge. And the spring part comes down to a line to that black line on the gauge. What we're going to do is align this gauge here so it's smooth with the top piece that it comes up to, that the ball nut goes up into. So what we're going to do is adjust nuts here, here, and there's one in the back behind the drip tray underneath. We're going to adjust all three nuts to level the transmission. Wrench. Make sure it's the right size and loosen the top adjusting nut. And after you've done that, there's a nut below it. And you adjust that nut with one hand while feeling up here with the other hand until it is smooth all the way around. Now you do not want to go beyond that black line, otherwise your transmission will be too high and you'll run into other problems. But you have a adjusting nut there, there, and one right in the back in the center. It's best to do this without the tanks falling on the tray. That way you can lift the tray up and adjust that back nut. Lifting the back nut up pulls it forward. Lifting this nut up moves it to the right. Lifting this nut on the right moves it to the left. If you lower these, it brings it this way. If you lower these, it brings it this way. You lower the rear one, it moves it back. You want to adjust those so this slides easily 
your fingers slide easily around it without no lips. See, that's got a lip on it there. And there's a little black line. You do not want to go beyond that. Now we have the transmission fairly well adjusted. What you want to do now is lower it by using the transmission switch. Turn the switch on. Make sure your main power is on. <coughs> Flip your transmission switch on and it'll lower. As soon as it lowers, turn your transmission switch off. Remove your, remove your gauge. Take your spider assembly, which has a notch in it, and make sure the notch goes over that stud on the left there. Place it on top. Move it around until it engages. And then replace the ball nut. Reverse thread. It's good to have that oiled so it doesn't rust tight because you'll want to take this off to clean it occasionally. Okay, now check all your carriers, make sure they swing out nice. All the springs are connected. real good. Then you want to turn your transmission switch on. Do not put your hands under it. And it'll shut off. It may go one more revolution and shut off. There is a shut off switch that the spider arm hits. Now to activate this in the on position Pull one of these levers over and it'll start up. And we'll go through another cycle. There's a switch underneath that shuts it off. It's located right there. arms are in the proper position. No carriers are out. This is in this position and one of these will contact that switch and shut it off. That is normal. Now it's time to check the carrier alignment with the feed down. This is your feed down unit right here. This is where the paper from your camera comes down and feeds into the carrier. Now what we're going to do is load a roll of film. Your camera swings out and the back opens up like this. The first thing you do right here is a paper switch. This lets your camera know if there's paper inside. When the paper comes down, it activates this switch to allow the machine to operate. So move that aside. Take your roll of film. Place it on top of the machine. A little bit of film hanging down. We'll guide it down the back side of the camera here. And it'll fit right in these gauges here. Now you have a thumb switch here and you have a slide here. Slide your switch out, roll the thumb switch down while pulling the paper down, and it will engage in this rubber roller. Keep rolling it down until it comes below the camera. Pull a goodly amount out, about four feet. And here is your cutter. This is a little solenoid that is activated electronically. Push that in and it will cut the strip off. Take your paper switch assembly Put it through the large holes and it slides down. Okay, now that's secure. Close your cover. Move your camera over. All right, now we're going to activate. We're going to activate the spider assembly, starting the transmission by moving the arm over, letting it drop. As soon as it drops, shut your transmission switch off. 
hit your activator button. It'll be located either on the outside of the machine for free play machines or on the inside of the door for your credit switch. After hitting your activator switch, your camera will start running and taking the picture. What we're going to do is feed the strip down to use as a gauge to align the carriers to the feed. down switch. It's a flat blade switch that these come up and hit to feed the paper down. That is your feed down switch. The switch right here. And this will activate the feed down and bring the strip down through this mechanism here. So we're going to hit that switch and let the paper come down. Okay, now what we're going to do is pull a carrier out Put that first strip in it, push it down in, and then we're going to take another picture. Activate the switch again. Okay, now this time we're just going to touch that switch just once. Now, what we're going to do with the feed down is roll the rubber with our fingers and bring the strip down just to the edge. See, there's the strip coming down right here. And what we're going to do with each carrier is bring each carrier up and around with a strip in it and just bring it up to the edge of that and see if it's square. What you're going to do, your power's on, you want to start your transmission, get your transmission running, and be ready to shut off the main power before it comes up and hits the feed down switch. Okay, you get your main power's off. And then by hand, rotate your pulley counterclockwise until your carrier comes up with the paper in it just to touch the top of the feed down. Okay. Now what you want to do is align your feed down, or your, your, I mean, I'm sorry, align your carrier with the feed down so these strips are even. That'll give you good feed down. You don't want it over too far this way or too far this way, otherwise the strip is going to miss the carrier and fall into the tanks. Now to adjust the carriers, the best thing to do is loosen the lock nut on the screw so it's finger loose. Do this on all of them before you proceed with this. It makes it a lot easier. Loosen your lock nut, make sure your screw is nice and loose, and that way you can adjust your carrier left and right. So when you get it over to this stage, you can reach up and adjust it so your carrier will align with the paper that's in it. Okay, once it's aligned, back it down just a little bit. Swing your carrier over to the off position and proceed with the next carrier and do that until all seven carriers are aligned and then remember to tighten your lock nuts that procedure roll your paper down pull it all the way out to remove it now you're ready to go on to the next step you've got your transmission aligned you've got your carriers aligned now it's time to put your tanks back in and put the chemical in it okay now we're going to put the tanks back in Color coding is important. Your color code is usually in this order. You have your developer, you have your bleach, and after the 
developer and bleach, you have a wash, a rinse tank. And then you have your fixer, which goes out of that. There's another wash tank that goes next to the developer, and a large rinse tank that goes between the small rinse tank and the fixer. Okay, now we have our tanks in. What we're going to do now is align the tanks. Your power switch for your transmission is off. Move one carrier out, preferably this one on the right side, and you're going to run your transmission around. Okay, shut it off just before it drops. And align that carrier with the right hand side rinse tank between the bleach and the fixer. Make sure it's right in the center. Okay, once you've noticed that that's in the center, move it back in, run your transmission all the way down, and shut it off. Now we're going to put the heat belt on. The heat belt goes around the entire assembly. with a Velcro strap. Try not to make your tanks move. You'll have to align them again. And then we put the tank ring over the top of that. The tank ring goes up with the large side up, small side down. Okay. Now you've got that assembly on. You haven't plugged in the heater yet. Check your alignment again. Make sure your tanks stay aligned. Now we're ready to put the chemical into the tanks. You have a yellow tank, red tank, green tank. Do it the color-coded way, and then you'll never forget what's in what tank. Your first large tank is your developer. You put seven and a half liters of working solution. That equates to two gallons. Put your seven and a half liters of working solution into the bleach tank, uh, developer tank, bleach tank, and fixer tank. The white tanks are strictly water. Temperature is important. You want to make sure that your developer is approximately 94 degrees, plus or minus one degree. And uh, what you do is you have your probe looks like this. Put that down inside your developer tank. Fill your developer tank with the chemical developer and then fill with cool or warm water. You'll have to mix it a little bit. Make sure you have a thermometer. This is very important. Put your thermometer down in there and mix it. Put water in it, cool water, warm water, until your temperature gauge reaches, uh, uh, reads about 95 degrees. Same with your bleach, same with your fixer. Keep them all a nice steady uh, temperature and you shouldn't have any problems. Uh, up on the right hand side, sometimes on the back of the machine, there is a temperature regulator that reads in centigrade. And what you'll want to do after you make sure that your developer is at 95, 94 degrees with your probe in there, make sure the probe's been in there for a couple of minutes too. Send the signal to the temperature regulator, what the temperature is on the tank. You turn the dial just until the red light goes off. That means it has reached the proper temperature. Red light on means the heat band's on. Red light off means the heat band's off. So you'll want to adjust that after a couple of minutes to make sure that the temperature has reached the sensor up in the temperature regulator box. Okay. Now you've got your tanks full of chemical, you have your tanks aligned, you have your carriers aligned, you have your camera with film in it, and you're ready to take pictures. First, what we want to do is make sure that the delivery unit is aligned properly so it will deliver the finished photo. This is your delivery unit. This is the activator that brings the strip up into the delivery unit. So what we're going to do first is put that blank strip we use to align the feed down 
into the first carrier coming up to this and align it to make sure it picks it up straight and smooth. Take your 5 16 inch nut driver, go on top, there are two nuts, bolts. Loosen them just a little bit. Don't, don't loosen them too much or you throw the angle off. And this will allow you to adjust it sideways and back and forth, in and out. And the transmission on. And bring the spider assembly up. As soon as the spider assembly comes up, shut your transmission switch off. Okay, take the first carrier that's going to come to this and put your strip down inside it. Start your switch, transmission switch, and bring it around. Just before it comes up, shut your main power switch off. Okay? Now, we're going to do is look down on top of the feed down. And what we're looking for is a square alignment with the carrier feed down. Uh, I mean the uh, delivery unit. Make sure your power is shut off. You don't want to get your fingers caught in it. And then you align and adjust this so the paper comes up right between those two rollers. You're going to turn your pulley by hand to bring it up. Make sure that your activator arm hits the top of the carrier. And you're going to adjust it in and out so it comes up almost directly in the center of the first two rollers. Okay, now we have the in and out set. What you're going to do is look down on top, looking directly down on top, you're going to align it so your roller is in direct alignment with the top portion right here of your carrier. You want to make sure that it's aligned properly so it's square. And then again, come back down and check your inner and outer to make sure that your paper is going to come up right between there. Also, make sure that your arm is going to hit the top of the carrier to activate it. Okay? Now then tighten your two adjusting bolts. This is a camera that has been removed from the machine itself to give you better detail on its functions, adjustments. This is your iris control knob. This controls how light or dark your picture is. The higher the number you go to on the scale, the darker your picture will be. The lower the number on the scale, the brighter or lighter your picture will be. Start off at about 11 on your iris control adjustment and go from there. You don't have to turn it another full number if it's too light or too dark. Just move it a slight bit and go step by step and check it and see what your picture looks like. Okay, there's a border control which controls how bright your border is. If your borders bleed down into your picture too bright, you can use this knob right on top to adjust how bright the bulb shines on your border. And you can lighten it or darken it accordingly with this. Now on both sides of the camera there are push buttons. These push buttons you push in to remove the camera cover and lift it off. Inside you will find a shutter your light bulb that controls your border, your paper switch. If you have a problem with your border control, you press in on the sides of this. There are two tangs. You press the tangs in and remove the socket and bulb assembly. And you have a light bulb inside there. Pushes in, turns. 
replace it, you put it back the same way you took it out, press the sides in, find the slot that it goes into, and replace the rubber cover over the back of it. Okay? Now, what we have here is the shutter. This is what opens, just like a regular camera would, to take the picture. It rotates like this. To, to, to move it, push it in and turn it with your hand like that. Okay, now in the up position like this, it should be activating the flash switch on the back. Now, when your shutter turns, when it's in the full up position, the shutter's in the full up position, this switch should fall into the groove on this cam in the back. Okay? If it's in the cam on the back and it's not in the up position, loosen your nut, making sure that switch stays in that cam, and then rotate your shutter until it's directly up top like this, and then tighten your nut. After making sure that this is level and the nut is tight, make sure your switch is still in that groove. If you're having a flash problem, this is one of the things you can check to make sure your switch is good and it's activating. First you can check it and see if it's clicking. That's a pretty good indicator. If it's clicking and you still think it might be the switch, loosen these two screws, drop your switch down, and test the switch with a volt ohm meter to make sure it's working properly. This is your camera motor. Occasionally you may put a couple of drops of 3-in-1 oil into these small holes up top. These are your oil ports. Keep your motor running smoothly. You can take that out put a few drops of oil in your motor transmission there too. Doesn't hurt to do that once in a while. Okay, now this is a little better view of what we went over earlier. This is your paper switch. And this is what makes your green light on the outside of your machi machine turn on and off. That senses if there's paper here. If there's paper here, it'll push that switch in. If you have a problem with your board of control and you've tried adjusting the light and you've got a black part of the border, these blocks here can be adjusted up or down to uh, even out your border. Loosen these two screws and move this assembly up or down very slightly. If you have a black bar under your uh, picture or over your picture, move it up or down accordingly and tighten these and test it. This is your paper cutter solenoid and scissor assembly. There is a spring on it which brings it back to the off position. Now when your carrier comes up and hits the feed down switch, what it will do is activate this to cut the paper and then the feed down starts and draws the paper down and puts it into the carrier. It's real important to make sure that springs back. If it doesn't spring back it's going to block your paper from coming down and your paper is going to get jammed up in your camera. There's a spring right here that uh, occasionally might break and they're available from Auto Photo Systems. It's a good extra part to have on hand. And that is the camera, basically. You have your prism here with a mirror. You've got your lens. Looks through here and then through here. Now, if you are experiencing a problem where at eye level you are too high or too low on the picture frame, this can be adjusted slightly up or down. There are two screws in the back that you can loosen to adjust your prism up or down. And it's, it's a, this is on a spring, so you can you can pull your prism out to clean. This is where your Joan plug goes. And up top, what we're going to put up on here next is a camera relay. This is the camera relay. It goes on top of the machine and plugs in the top with a Jones plug, just like that. And there's two screws that hold it in place. And what we have inside of this 
are a set of switches and solenoids. Solenoids open and close, and that controls the switches to the camera that tells the camera to start operating. You can always check these to make sure they're not burned. Check for corrosion. Check that the switches are functioning properly. And that is your camera relay box. The cover goes back on top of your camera. install your camera relay. Just like that. And you're ready to put it back in the machine. Make sure you remember push in your shutter and close it. It'll lock. This is the AP-10 unit found up on the top shelf inside the machine behind the camera. This controls most of the functions of the machine. This is the camera test switch. Press that, the camera should advance. Press the step switch. This causes the stepper inside here to activate and cause the machine to run. This is your reset switch. Resets the stepper. This is your charge switch. This charges the capacitors up inside the door to charge up and this is the discharge which causes the capacitors to discharge and the flashes to activate. When you press this button down inside the machine, make sure your slide switch here is all the way to the lower position. You press that charge switch and your needle on your voltmeter will come up. This controls the amount of voltage going to your flash capacitors. You want to adjust it just so it's not in the red range. You want it up good places between 350 and 400 volts. And after you've done that, discharge it. These down here, this is a stepper uh, reset button. This is your circuit breaker. And this is your main power circuit breaker. If either of these are out, if you're having a problem with the machine and you find these out, push them in, test it. If they still pop out, then you have a stepper problem or something else. Take the top cover off. It's held on by six screws. And inside, what you'll find is your stepper board here and your regulator board over here. Now, what, what we do here, to remove the stepper, pull your plug off, and on the back, you'll find little plastic or nylon holders. Squeeze them in can't squeeze them in with your finger, use a little pair of pliers and push them forward. After you push them forward, your board will fall right out. Now this is an electronic stepper board and it has dip switches on it that will adjust to uh, various machines. This is the older style stepper that uh, each one is made for a specific machine. This one is a 1-2 stepper. That means for one pulse, it'll take two frames or two pictures on one strip. Now, if you have one of these and you need to order one, you have to uh, specify one pulse, two pictures, 1-2, one, a 1-3, one, a 1-4, one, a 1-1, one, one, because each one is designed for a specific machine. Whereas if you have an electronic stepper, you, they'll send you one and you can just adjust it to what you have in your machine. Now, the regulator board, this controls your uh, flashes. This will charge up your capacitors. And this has two plugs on it, a square plug and a long, narrow plug. And this is removed in the same manner as the stepper board. You have your nylon retainers that need to be squeezed and pushed through. And then it'll fall out. And 
this is your regulator board for your AP-10. You have two sets of relays and various capacitors and resistors. If you're having a problem with a flash, you can check this board for any burns on the traces or any components burned out. That is your regulator board. Okay, the next item we're going to review is your spider assembly. What you have here is a device that has seven arms on it. It has a cam on each arm that springs in and out. And on each arm, the spring is connected like this. There are adjusting screws and lock nuts that gauge how far in and out each cam goes. It's a good place to oil it is directly in here on each cam here and on the back side where they pivot. Every time you change your chemicals in your machine your entire spider assembly should come out. The carrier should be brushed, clean, washed, rinsed and then go down one by one, they're all numbered, one through seven, starting with number one. Oil the two points here. Oil your screw and your nut, keep it from rusting. Oil your spring, keep it from rusting. Wipe it so the oil doesn't drip down into your tanks. And that is your spider assembly. A few drops of oil in here, so this operates smoothly. And you've got your top spring, which is hooked to a post on number one arm and goes on to the spider here. Now that's replaced like this. And you have this off. One end slides over, push the other end through, and then over here to the post. And this slides over right in that position there. And what that does when this is actually in the working position, this comes up and down, and your shutoff switch for your transmission will hit right here, unless your cam is out with a carrier in it, and then it moves it out of position so it won't hit that switch. So if your carrier is moving around in the tanks and all of a sudden it comes off and it shuts off the machine, you have to try to bend one of these that is hitting it. It'll be in the wrong position, so you have to bend these in or out. Make sure that all these come out and hit the screw. If they're hitting too close here, you're going to have to bend that in or out. This is a capacitor pack. This is what charges up to make the flash go off. This is very high voltage. They're 450 volt DC capacitors. Now if you have one you don't know if it's charged or not, you're going to have to find out. Don't find out the wrong way. When you unplug it out of the machine, do not touch these terminals here. You could get a quite a shock. You need a volt ohm meter. What you do is carefully remove this top cover. And inside this is very dangerous. You can see maybe on this one where it has arced and uh, has blown out. But what you want to do is take your volt ohm meter, put it on four, at least 450 volts, and test across these two terminals here and see if there's any voltage left in the capacitor. If there is, be very careful. Put the cover back on. Put it away for a while it will eventually bleed down. If you need to discharge it immediately, put a resistor across it of some sort, a very high voltage, uh, or uh, yeah, a very high voltage resistor, and bleed the capacitors down, drain them down. It does take quite a while for them to drain by themselves without shorting them. Never stick a screwdriver across the terminals. It'll explode or deafen you.
the delivery unit that's been removed from a machine. These are the connector tabs. The black goes to black inside your machine, the white goes to white. They connect crossways like this and turn them up inside the machine, not these two. This goes to your dryer if your machine has a, an electric dryer hooked up to it to uh, dry the pictures off. <laughs> there are several sets of rubber rollers inside. It's good to keep them clean, take any corrosion or uh, uh, dirt off of them with a, a wet rag. This is your chain assembly. This is the adjuster for the chain assembly. You loosen these two screws here to move the adjuster up or down to keep tension on your chain. You don't want it too tight and you don't want it too loose. Here's your switch that activates the motor. Very simple process. If you're coming out with scratched pictures, these metal runners in here will need to be cleaned. Get yourself a bottle brush of some sort. Take it, the unit out of the machine, wet the brush, soapy water or just plain water and brush your metal guides, front and back. There are a set in the back too. So if you keep cleaning the front with it on the machine and you're still getting scratched pictures, you will have to take it off and clean the back ones also. Uh, one thing to do is cut a strip of sandpaper, the size of a strip, and run it up through the delivery unit and move your rubber wheels back and forth and sand the guides smooth and that'll help stop scratching pictures also. You have a few points where you can oil these. They shouldn't need oil though. This one happens to be a uh, uh, delivery unit that has nylon bearings which shouldn't have to need any oil. Some of them are brass bearings which you can put a drop of oil on the shaft. Here, 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 here. And then turn it over. You've got a, a shaft here and here and down on the sides of the cams you can put the gears here you can put a little oil and the motor can be oiled also right there on the bearing right here and one drop in here they usually don't need oil they last quite a long while actually but with proper maintenance you can make it last almost forever okay this device is your trigger assembly this is what sits up underneath your camera tray. This is your shutoff switch. When your spider assembly comes up with that arm in the in position, <coughs> it will hit that switch and shut the transmission off. So if your transmission keeps going around and around and around and won't stop, check your switch here. Make sure it's being activated when that arm comes up and hits it. This is the part that swings the carrier in and out. In the off position, when the carrier is out and it comes around, the cam will hit here and swing back in. And then eventually it will turn around and shut off, come up and hit the switch. Now when your final picture is activated on your machine, it activates a solenoid here. The solenoid pulls in and causes this to go in the down position. So when the carrier comes around, the cam hits it and swings the carrier out. After it comes up and hits the feed down, it shuts the solenoid off. So when it comes back around again, and after delivering the picture, the cam will swing back in. So make sure that that's lubricated. You have lubrication points here, here, in here, back here where it rolls. This will roll. With these two guides, it will roll. You have a spring here, keep that lubricated so it doesn't rust. And you have your adjusting nut here. And when you adjust that, you control how far up or down these two pivots go. You have a variety of adjustments here. And that just plugs in. And that is your trigger assembly. Okay, now what we've covered in this tape is machine setup, how to get your machine started after receiving it, how to go through various adjustments, getting your machine started. Now other points we have to go through are the flashes. If your flashes don't flash, run the test on the AP-10, see which one doesn't flash. 
pull the back of your flash box off, remove the flash carefully and see if it's burned or shorted, put a new flash in, test it again. If it still doesn't flash, change out a capacitor pack. If that doesn't do it, check your regulator board and your AP10. If that doesn't do it, check the harness, that's the actual socket that your flash plugs into. Check that and see if there's a shorted wire. Always do this with the machine off. Uh, and be very careful with capacitor packs. If they're charged, they can shock you severely. Uh, some other points to, uh, to look at would be color, uh, flesh tones in your picture. If your picture is too yellow, if the flesh tones look too yellow, take some of the yellow out. If you don't have any yellow in and it's too yellow, install a red or, uh, red or magenta filter in the front of your camera. If your flesh tones are then coming out too orange, put a cyan or a blue filter in. Uh, with these adjustments you can get a pretty good flesh tone picture. Now on each roll of film there is a, a, a guide on the film printed on the box that tells you pretty much where to start. It'll have a number and say uh, M for magenta which is red, uh, a number in Y which is yellow, or a number in C which is cyan or blue. And pretty much the most important thing on these photo machines is keeping them clean, keeping them lubricated. Uh, it's the most important thing is keeping them clean and lubricated. If you do that, things will operate smoothly. They won't wear out. Uh, if you have any problems with a machine that you cannot uh, cope with, call Auto Photo Systems at 1-800-877. 8,000. After you dial that number, you'll get a tone. At the tone, dial 609-9939, and that'll put you in touch with Auto Photo Systems, Tustin, California. And there should be someone there that will help you uh, with your problem. If it's after hours, the answering service will answer the phone and uh, uh, call somebody to help you. I hope this tape helps everyone, and uh, we'll see you later.